Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome everybody to the webinar. Who will step up and make the slam dunk? Wow, as cool as it is to have this music still playing. All right, there we go. Uhuru, everyone. Uhuru, Uhuru. Welcome. Uhuru means freedom in Swahili. And we are the Uhuru Solidarity Movement, the organization of white people working under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party for reparations to African people. Check out this shirt at uhuruplanet.com. And we are so honored and excited to be here tonight. We want to salute our leadership, Chairman Omali Ishatella, the founder and leader of the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhura Movement, and Deputy Chair Ona Zanei Yeshatela, who we will be discussing quite a bit tonight, the architect, the visionary, and, and the world-renowned uh, champion of the independent African economy. And I want to salute Ali Ayello. Good to see you, Ali. How you doing? Jesse, good to see you as well. Glad to be on this webinar with you. And I want to join in saluting the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, Chairman Omani Shatela, and, and Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatela Uhuru. And uh, Uhuru. We, yeah, we have an exciting webinar coming up for you guys today. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Today is a very important day. Today is what is referred to as Give St. Louis Day, a day where people are encouraged throughout the St. Louis area and really throughout the country to contribute to a nonprofit organization that is fighting for genuine social change and transformation. And we know that there is no organization that fits that description better than the African People's Education and Defense Fund and the Black Power Blueprint. So that's why the Uhuru Solidarity Movement tonight is hosting this webinar, Who Will Step Up and Make the Slam Dunk, Give St. Louis Day for the Black Power Blueprint with the goal to raise $5,000 out of the $100,000 needed to install one of the Black Power Blueprint's latest incredible programs, a black community controlled basketball court right in the heart of North St. Louis. So this is such an important program. This is about African self-determination. This is about political and economic power in the hands of the black working class. And we as white people can take a stand for reparations by supporting these projects, not just in words, but in reparations, in resources. Give stlday.org slash Black Power Blueprint is where you can go to make your contribution tonight. And again, we wanna give our deepest salute to the leadership of this incredible movement under whose leadership we have the tremendous honor to work. Deputy Chair Onizanea Shatela and Chairman Omali Shatela and the entire African People's Socialist Party, which leads the Uhuru movement worldwide, fighting for the liberation of African people everywhere. And I am so excited to bring on our guests tonight. We have two incredible speakers and leaders from the Uhuru movement who will be addressing us tonight. We're so honored to have them on. Before we get to those introductions, I wanted to let you know that already, before we even started this webinar, you have taken an amazing stand and donated to this program for the last several days so that by the time we got to this webinar, we were already over the hump and on our way towards clocking out at $5,000 and above for the Black Power Blueprints Community Basketball Court Program. And right now, we have raised already $3,275 on givestlday.org slash Black Power Blueprint. And guess what? When we raise that final 725, let me say it this way. When we raise another 1,000, that 1,000 will be matched by Ann Leslie, formerly known and known to many of you as Ann Hirsch, our stalwart comrade, longtime supporter and friend of the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru Movement, and, a, and somebody who went to St. Louis and volunteered in the painting and construction of the Uhuru House there, and has also taken a very powerful stand in St. Petersburg, Florida, and now lives in Ecuador. So we want to shout out Anne, who has done a $1,000 matching fund. So for the next $1,000, comrades, when you go to givestlday.org slash Black Power Blueprint, every dollar you contribute is doubled. It becomes $2. 
because Anne has put in this $1,000 matching fund. So let's do this. Let's bring in another $1,000 to be matched by Anne, and that will bring us above and beyond 5,000, which is only a fraction of what is needed to make this incredible program happen. But it makes a big difference, and any amount that you can contribute will go a long way. So go to givestlday.org slash Black Power Blueprint. And before we bring on our, before we actually, what we wanna do is we wanna thank you, you amazing supporters, you amazing uh, people out there who have heard this call and who have seen this program and who have been moved to take action and contribute. We wanna thank you. We wanna sincerely express our deepest appreciation to you. And, and uh, before we do that, we're gonna show a video, then we're gonna salute some of our donors and then we're gonna go into a dynamic and powerful interview with two incredible people who are on the ground, on the front lines in St. Louis uh, in the Black Power Blueprint. So before we come back and thank some of our donors, uh, we wanna show you this powerful video that was produced by the Black Power Blueprint um, as seen on YouTube uh, by people around the world and other social media. This is uh, the video on the B Black Community Basketball Court program that we are raising funds for tonight. Right here in St. Louis, the conditions of the North Side is horrific. I just think that it's important to say that we believe in the democratic anti-colonial right to be able to have community control of every aspect of our lives and our communities. And I think the most fundamental, most democratic, most anti-colonial demand that I can conceive of is community control of basketball court. The basketball court is so important. Uh, number one, because the community has no recreation. Uh, so along with uh, this uh, lack of grocery stores and economic activity, there is no kind of cultural uh, activity and programs for children to participate in. We need a basketball court. We need to have things in our community. Black people need to be empowered of their own life. We want black community control of a basketball court, a simple democratic anti-colonial demand. Who will step up and make the slam dunk? Mm, wow. wow. And just to reiterate, the slam dunk is $100,000. That's what's needed to make this project happen. So uh, don't feel limited by our $5,000 goal. If you can go above and beyond that and do the whole 100,000, get in touch uh, with APEDF, you know, let us know. Um, go to givestlday.org slash blueprint or apedf.org and make your contribution. So, Allie, I'm turn it over to you. Uhuru, uhuru, Jesse. Um, yeah, that was a powerful video. And just to reiterate, this is not just, you know, some ordinary basketball court. This is Black community control of basketball court and the Black Power Blueprint. It's not just an ordinary project, but this is putting power into the hands of the African community. And I want to put forward and announce some of our donors that we got in tonight that has helped us to raise um, to raise the amount that we have raised so far, um, which is $3,275. So um, we've got our comrade and chair of USM. We have Jesse who put in, our chair Jesse who put in $210, our vice chair Amanda, $210. We've got Johan, who's holding a Give STL Day fundraiser. We've got Jackson, who put in $26. Carrie, who put in $10. We've got uh, Sarah Ritterspot, who's holding a Give STL Day fundraiser. We've got uh, Janice, who put in $105. Leah, $200. Raya, $52. Zoe, $21. Johan, $52. Danielle, $50. Johan, another $52. Chairwoman Penny, who put in uh, $26 and is also holding a Give STL Day fundraiser. 
Raya, who put in another $52. Bree, who put in $26. Len, $52. KC, $52. Lily, $210. Maureen, $52. Kyle, $52. Uh, Hallie, $52 or $21. We have Anonymous, who put in $52. Andrew, $17. Beth, $20. Rebecca, $21. Another anonymous put in $10. We've got Jenny who put in $40. Gregory, $21. Catherine, $26. Jace, $26. Wendy, $52. Janet, $36. Jesse, you wanna you wanna help me out with this list? You want me to keep going? Uh, yeah, thank you, Ali. This is so exciting. A huru to everybody, and thank you so much. Uh, Penny, Chairwoman Penny Hess put in another $26. Anonymous put in $21. Henry put in $10. Anonymous put in $17. Mel put in $27. I was inspired, and I put in another $70. Trudy put in $21. Carson put in $26. William put in $25. Christina put in 31. Anonymous put in 30. Another anonymous put in 49. Uh, Selene put in $68. Mads put in $10. Redbeard put in longtime uh, su supporter and, and person who has stood in solidarity with the African liberation movement, put in $775. Uhuru to Redbeard. Uh, anonymous, $52. Colin, $26. Lisa Watson, $105. Jamie, $21. Pete, $52. Sandy, $25. And, and the donations keep coming in, by the way. Uh, they have continued since we've started. Uh, Sa Sandy, I think that was since we started. Uh, was Pete, I think Pete was. Uh, uh, Jamie, uh, hey, Ali. Uh, $15, to Seali. Mel put in another $37, and Bakari, the Western Regional Representative of the African People's Socialist Party, put in $26, Uhuru. Thank you so much, everybody, for all of your incredible contributions. We are already at 3,432, so let's keep it going. We've got 500, oop, another one, Stephanie. Stephanie Midler put in $52. Uhuru, Stephanie, Uhuru, reparations. This is so exciting. Just want to salute and thank everybody. I can't even keep up. This spreadsheet keeps updating. Allison, Secretary General Allison Haney put in, here we go, $52. Uhuru, Uhuru. Secretary General, this is so powerful. So I'm going to stop there, Allie, because I know we got to get to our amazing guests, but we're already at $3,537.30, which means we are only uh, $4,063.70, $4,062.70 away. Uh, looking over at Amanda here to see if that quick math checks out from getting to our 462, from getting to our, did I say 4,000? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Do it. Do 4,000 if you can, but what I meant to say was 400, $462.70 uh, towards unlocking Anne's magic fund, magic, <laughs> matching fund of uh, $1,000. Uh, so let's do this. Let's make this happen. So Uhuru, this is so exciting. Thank you, everybody. And let's keep it going. Give stlday.org slash Black Power Blueprint. All right, so Allie, um, let's go ahead. Whoops, I, I, had, I had you uh, on the spotlight the whole time. There we go. So just want to thank uh, everybody again. And um, let's go ahead and uh, let's bring on our incredible guests. We're so excited to have uh, these powerful speakers on tonight. So I will start off and just say uh, to Charwa Masimba is the Economic Development Director of the Black Power Blueprint and a powerful member of the African People's Socialist Party who has made a tremendous impact, not only in the St. Louis area, but worldwide with the stand that he has taken with his incredible uh, 
uh, stance and leadership within the Black Power Blueprint, and also most recently with the campaign for Ward, Ward 21 Aldermen in St. Louis with the campaign slogan, Black is Back, on the platform of reparations and economic development for the African community. We're really honored to have T'Charwa on. And uh, Ali, if you want to also introduce Kitty. Uh, yeah, we'll bring... and so, so her welcome to Charwa, and then also we want to welcome Kitty. Kitty Riley is a longtime member of the African People's Solidarity Committee with the honor to work under the leadership of Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella, Projects Coordinator for the Black Power Blueprint. And Kitty was assigned to move to St. Louis to work under the party's leadership in building solidarity with the Black Power Blueprint. She plays a key role in the project's work. We are honored to have Kitty Riley on with us today. So, Uhuru and big welcome to Tacharwa and Kitty. Uhuru. 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 Happy to be here. Uhuru, glad to have you on. Thank you both so much. We're very honored. And we, we want to start with some questions for uh, for Director Tacharwa. And thank you again for being here, Tacharwa. It's an incredible honor to have you on this program. And as was mentioned, you are the Economic Development Director for the Black Power Blueprint and Black Star Industries, and also a member of the African People's Socialist Party. And you are based out of St. Louis on the north side where African people are facing extreme conditions of colonial poverty with abandoned buildings, police violence, no economic development or jobs. Um, could you talk about the basis for these conditions and how the Black Power Blueprint is changing them? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, Jesse, I just want to uh, really recognize the significance of the work that you do, uh, working directly under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, um, you know, just a profound chair of the Rural Solidarity Movement. And uh, th this is a significant uh, fundraiser, you know, and a webinar for people to uh, participate in this project. And also want to just recognize Ali Yellow as well. And we have this, uh, you know, these very, very real conditions in the uh, African colony in North St. Louis, um, where you know you have scores, as you say, scores and scores of abandoned and vacant properties. You know, tens of thousands, and you know, uh, people liken it all the time to a literal war zone. You know, it looks like it's been bombed out. And you know, we've heard the statistics. If you've listened to anything that we've done, where uh, you know, 30% uh, of the population is living off an average of $5 a day uh, per person. And uh, you have this whole process underway where everybody feeds off the black community in North St. Louis, like you see across uh, the African world, where you have uh, real estate speculators who call themselves developers and corporations who are, you know, literally preying on the African community. They prey on us in the form of uh, higher property taxes, um, they prey on us uh, through various different uh, code violations that they impose on us uh, as a way, you know, to uh, take our homes. Uh, they impose themselves on us by um, creating this whole uh, economy of uh, policing the African community uh, out of existence, where uh, nearly 50% of the budget of the uh, general budget of the entire city of St. Louis goes toward uh, police. And where recently the Board of Aldermen passed uh, legislation to uh, allow a billionaire to fly drone, to fly airplanes over the black community specifically and record everything we do up to 18 hours a day. Uh, we also have this uh, entity called the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, which is a uh, international spy agency uh, that uh, deploys drones and drone strikes uh, on, you know, colonized people throughout the world for the interests of these same kinds of, uh, you know, uh, economic, uh, you know, colonial initiatives, you know, to take people's land, take their resources. And so the black community uh, has literally been starved of an economy for decades where, um, you know, there's this whole process underway to push the black community out of North St. Louis. So you see these uh, military attacks, police attacks and whatnot as uh, one of the mechanisms to begin to get uh, the undesirables out of the way. 
and to push the African community out of North St. Louis so that our land, our property, all of these vacant and abandoned buildings that have been intentionally left to rot for decades can then be turned over, you know, in uh, large swaths, one fell swoop, if possible, to uh, large scale corporations and uh, uh, entities like the spy agency that took nearly 1,000 acres of property from black people in North St. Louis. They used eminent domain to do it. Um, and with the help of local politicians, you know, so you just see this whole gentrification process underway and it comes with a whole military assault and, and it is accompanied with economic starvation. And so uh, we don't, uh, that means that we don't even have basic kinds of recreation. Uh, that means that the city budget is being balanced uh, as usual by taking money away from recreation. So uh, last year, all of these city budget, uh, the inc uh, potential increase that would have gone toward recreation was used to, uh, you know, pay uh, other areas of the uh, budget. So these are the kinds of conditions that you see. It's a real uh, economic attack on the black community, and it leaves our people without any kind of economy, without any kind of recreation, without any kind of hope. And um, that is the context in which the Black Power Blueprint emerged to really build an economy for the black community so that we can have jobs, we can start businesses, we can own our own homes, we can buy up these vacant and abandoned properties and uh, our community can be, uh, you know, a new life can be brought to our community. Thank you so much to Charwa. Really appreciate that, um, that response and, and really unite with that. And Ali, I think I'm gonna turn it over to you now. Yeah, thank you, Tacharwa. I really, really appreciate that response and, and, and laying, laying that out. Um, and before I jump into, I just appreciate what you said about, you know, the city budget and, and the city spends it other things, but the Black Power Blueprint is able to focus you know, the resources and giving the African community what it needs and, and, and putting resources into these, you know, recreation facilities. Um, because it works in the interest of, of the black community. Um, so I just appreciate you laying out the conditions and the importance of the black power blueprint. Um, and we've inspired a new donor to give. I want to salute uh, Key and Gozi, who just put in $20. So Uhuru and salute to Key and Gozi brings us that much closer to our goal. We now have only $442 to go. And I'm going to go ahead and match Keen Gozi at $20 and put in $20 tonight as well. Um, and so uh, our next, our, yeah, and just want to encourage people, if you want to go ahead and contribute, you can do that at givestlday.org slash Black Power Blueprint. And um, I've got another question for you to Charwa. So Chairman Omalia Shatella has referred to the demand for a black community control of the basketball court as the most democratic demand you can imagine. Why is this basketball court so significant in the work of the African community in North St. Louis for self-determination? Yeah, I really want to, um, I hope I'm being heard. It looks like, I really want to uh, just really meet with uh, that assessment that it is the most democratic, basic democratic demand that a people community can ask for. And um, Chairman Omari Yisichella is the uh, real visionary uh, and leadership behind the Black Power Blueprint, um, along with Deputy Chair Owners and Nate Yisichella, who um, is uh, making you know this uh, campaign happen in the most bold and uh, beautiful fashion, you know, along with all of the other work she does throughout the entire world. And um, I don't know if I'm being heard. Can 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 I be heard? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, you know, it is uh, again the the thing is that the reason that we don't have a basketball court is because all of the money that is supposed to be uh, earmarked for uh, the black people, you know, because we pay taxes, because we provide labor. Uh, when we go to work every day, and uh, all of that is extracted from us. And then the economy, we don't have an economy. We literally get started with an economy. So uh, the street uh, that we want to put the basketball court on is, uh, it looks like a little war zone, but you have these young children there, you know, full of hope and activity who play basketball uh, right in the middle of the street. They have a little portable basketball hoop that, that they play uh, with right in the middle of the street, you know, and it's dangerous. You got all kinds of traffic coming through. 
and uh, they get harassed by the police. You know, and here it is that they have no kind of economy whatsoever. And then they become the target of, uh, of the police. And so it is part of uh, a struggle for the African community of North St. Louis to be able to determine its own destiny and to say what it is that uh, we would like to have in our communities and not have politicians tell us what to do, uh, not have uh, developers driving uh, the economic interests in our community. And uh, for us to be able to really uh, uh, continue to build this incredible project uh, called the Black Power Blueprint, you know, where we are purchasing abandoned buildings, revitalizing them, and really uh, contending, competing with the uh, economy that's designed to reward uh, real estate speculators who call them developers and these large corporations. So um, in that way, I think it's the most democratic basic demand that we can have. Nobody should ever be able to stop a community from saying that we want to put a basketball court up in our community, especially when you have a community with scores and scores and scores and scores of vacant and abandoned buildings and zero recreation activity. For real, for real. Thank you, Tacharwa. I just, I, I really unite, and I was very uh, moved by, you know, how the chairman articulated that, um, and the way you just explained that and put that forward as well. And um, I went ahead and made another fifty dollar contribution uh, because, you know, the African community has the right to power over their own communities. Uh, the children have a right to a future in their own interests. And this, this basketball court is, it's not just a basketball court, it's a struggle for power and self-determination and community control. So I, I just unite that it is the most uh, democratic demand and we have to uh, support this project with everything we've got. So um, thank you so much for that to Charwa. And uh, we have one more question. And um, of course, you know, we, we look forward to continuing this discussion with you throughout this hour. Um, but the last question that we have planned for tonight is um, is regarding uh, the support from the community, because we know this is a project that is rooted in the people. And in your various roles as uh, director of economic development and as a recent candidate for Ward 21 Alderman, you have often spoke so eloquently about the conditions on the north side and the experiences that you've had organizing amongst the people fighting for genuine economic development and political power. Could you talk about the support from the community uh, and the involvement and the, the stake that the community has in these programs uh, of the Black Power Blueprint and what it means to the community on the north side of St. Louis? Yeah, I, uh, so, you know, as a member of the Uhuru Movement, I not only ran for all the person for the 21st Ward, but also uh, Columbia and Annette ran for the third ward, all the first. And then both of those wards are, um, you know, right next to each other. And the basketball court is on a street uh, where she lives and organizes. And uh, the children that we saw uh, in that video are um, actually children are the ones who play basketball on that street and live on that street. And uh, they are the ones uh, who support this. And the people on the street are the ones who support this basketball court. And, uh, you know, we've seen this entire project of the Black Power Blueprint when, you know, dozens, you know, hundreds, uh, dozens and dozens of volunteers from throughout the community who come in and participate in the community garden, who are uh, volunteered, as you said, that uh, Ann Leslie did uh, when we uh, renovated the Uhura House, you know, who came in and uh, painted uh, walls and, uh, you know, swept floors and moved, uh, you know, garbage out of the, the uh, basement and who uh, have just wanted to be a part of this project in a thousand different ways. And we've had to go to the people uh, numerous time, times to get petitions uh, when we've had uh, any kind of uh, uh, issue with the city and we needed to get something past, you know, we've, uh, people have shown the demonstration in overwhelming ways uh, that is uh, even difficult to calculate. You know, we have black contractors for, uh, from the community who have been hired to do the work. Uh, you know, we've had an outdoor market and we have another outdoor market coming up, farmer's market coming up. We have vendors have had and we'll have vendors coming in. This is a real project 
uh, to bring, you know, a democratic participation of this community into this effort to revitalize our community. And we've seen the support. We saw it in the campaigns uh, where we just saw uh, hundreds of people come to the polls and express their deep unity uh, with a real genuine kind of politic. So, you know, we uh, are just happy that uh, we have been able to uh, elicit, you know, right alongside the people, uh, their participation in building the Black Power Blueprint, uh, and now uh, building this basketball court that we are asking people to support by going to givestl.org, I think it is, uh, slash Black Power Blueprint. It's a significant project, and uh, it is a project of a people. Uhuru, thank you, Tacharwa. I fully night. It's a, it's a project of the people, and that's what makes Black Power Blueprint is so different than any other program or thing out there is that every piece about it is fighting in the interest of the Black community. Every single piece about it to uplift the Black community. And that's so evident. I just appreciate you sharing like the community support to Charwa and putting that out there because the evidence that this project uh, fights in the interest of the community is based in, you know, the, the actual support of the community that the community comes out and participates and sees this as their own. So I just, I just really appreciate that. And, you know, it's so true. There's no, there's no other project like this out there on, on the planet that's really changing, changing the material conditions. Um, so thank you so much to Chara. It's a real honor to have you on the program with us tonight. Um, and I want to go ahead and thank some of our new donors that contributed um, tonight uh, to continue to support this community basketball, community basketball court. So we had Comrade Mara who put in $105, Uhuru Mara. We had Renee who put in $10, Ruby who put in $26, Chairwoman Penny who put in $26, Comrade Diane who put in $27. So we are making our way and guess what? We only have $175 to go. So keep it coming comrades, keep supporting this amazing project you can go to givestlday.org slash Black Power Blueprint. Um, so now I want to turn it over to uh, Jesse to, introduce, to, uh, to bring our first question for Kitty. Uhuru. Uhuru, wow. I just want to thank Tacharwa. That was so profound. And I, I unite with what Ali said. It's an incredible honor to to have you on this program. And thank you so much for being here and for, uh, for your leadership um, and for what, what the Black Power Blueprint is doing. And I also want to um, shout out everyone who's participating on Facebook and YouTube from all over the country. People are tuning in. There's a new hashtag uh, starting up, support the court. Uh, so support the Black Community Basketball Court for the Black Power Blueprint. Go to uh, givestlday.org slash Black Power Blueprint and donate, 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 whatever you can. We only have $175 to go, at which point Comrade Ann Leslie is going to go on and put in $1,000 to match your donation. So let's make it happen. And uh, without any further ado, it is my great honor to, uh, to bring up Kitty Riley, who, as we mentioned earlier, is a longtime member of the African People's Solidarity Committee and the projects coordinator of the Black Power Blueprint. And Kitty, welcome to the program tonight. Uhuru. Uhuru, Jesse and Ali. Uhuru. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I really want to salute uh, my leadership, Chairman Amalia Shatella, who was the first one to come into St. Louis after the killing of Mike Brown, who knew that it had to go beyond uh, protests and wanted to really build the organizational capacity of the African working class in St. Louis, and then sent Deputy Chair Ona Zene Ishitela, who, as we all have said, is the architect of the Black Power Blueprint. Blueprint. As Deputy Chair has said, she came for a week and she stayed for two years. And that's the reality, that is the commitment 
that she has and, and the African People's Socialist Party have to the African working class and transforming the conditions you know, of colonialism. And I just want to also, you know, just be honored to work with, here with you and with Ali and the African People's Solidarity Committee and really salute that profound presentation from T'Char and the Simba. And what an honor it is. And I know people envy me that I have the opportunity to work in St. Louis, you know, in such a powerful project and under such powerful day-to-day -day leadership here in St. Louis. So, you know, to answer, you know, what I thought when I first got here, um, it was very, very humbling. Very humbling, very, very inspiring, and a real wake up call to the reality of colonialism and the conditions the African working class has to live under in every city across the country, in the world. But it was very startling in St. Louis, as T'Chara so brilliantly laid out. You know, what the African community daily assaults of colonialism, there's no economy. They, and, and, I don't know, it's just, I love the thought of the uh, black community control basketball court because there are, they cannot build aspirations for their children because of the colonial conditions. And that's what we all want to see, what we all think children deserve, you know, a life free activity, not to mention that a bas even a rec recreational facility such as a basketball court can help bridge uh, the disparities in life expectancy for up, for up to 15 years just to have that in your community. So it's really powerful stand that people are taking with their donations. And I also want to donate $52 towards the Black Community Controlled Basketball Court. So yeah, well, the dy dynamism of working under the leadership of Deputy Chair, Ona Zanea Chattel, was also a profound experience and is to, to the day. And I think it was the chairman when he paraphrases Malcolm X, who once said, there are those who sit on the hot stove, those of us who sit on the hot stove, and those who observe those sitting on the hot stove. You know, and the African working class really bears the hot stove, the brunt of everything the social system has to give. And we, we in the white community observe those sitting on the hot stove. But when you get under the leadership of the movement and you work, have the honor of working with Deputy Chair Onis Ney Chatella, the pace is the pace of self-government. And that's what you see in St. Louis. The Black Power Blueprint is on a timetable of urgency of African people solving the problems imposed on them. They're taking political, economic, cultural, social power over their lives and communities now and for the future. So the Black Power Blueprint from its inception under the leadership of Deputy Chair Ona Zene has been moving like a freight train down West Florissant Avenue. And if it wasn't for the question of resources and the fact that African people don't have control of their own resources from the continent of Africa, the mineral wealth, from their own labor and everything they built that has gone into our communities, this whole city would have been turned right side up by now. It has been powerful. So, you know, it's uplifting the entire community. Every day, everybody is telling everybody else, who's telling everybody else that the pride they feel, the beauty of the outdoor venue, the flowers blooming and blossoming and trees and what was there was so demoralizing and decrepit in terms of housing and how that's been, you know, removed for growth you know, for garden, for vegetable garden, flower gardens. So, you know, as white people, we've been given, you know, a way to be part of this process. And, you know, our donations as reparations, which is really a true principled response, you know, it gives us a chance to negate the kind of colonial economy that we're hooked into since birth in the social system and to actually you know, put something forward to this anti-colonial project of the Black Power Blueprint. Because like Deputy Chair says, you know, it's so much more than acquiring property, you know, and buildings, it's transforming life. You know, it's African community self-governing and organizing in their own interests. It's the most incredible anti-gentrification project in this country and in this world today. And there are people who join, you know, the projects committee in other cities, African people who join because they want to bring the Black Power Blueprint to their city. 
So this is a powerful, powerful, you know, example to the world what can happen, you know, with African working class self-government. Uh -huh. Wow. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. That's that's so right on. And just really appreciate what you just said and and uh, all of the work that is happening there and what it means. And also the fact that you put in uh, $52. And I also want to let you know that uh, Comrade uh, Maureen put in $262. And at that point, uh, and Leslie's matching fund was Woo. unlocked, as we say. So uh, that Girl. brought us over $5,000 then your donation and then Gina is listening to you and is inspired listening to you into Charwa and wants to give to this program, put in another 52. So we're going past the goal. We're at $5,192.30 now. So we're gonna keep it going. Uh, we know this is out of $100,000 that is needed. Uh, Kingozi uh, is putting in, just put in $21. So Uhuru, thank you so much uh, to everybody and and to you, Kitty. and. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Ali to pose the next question. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you for that uh, powerful answer, Kitty. And just really appreciate you putting forward. Deputy Chair said that this is like, it's not just acquiring property. This is transforming lives. You know, that's, that's yeah. extraordinarily powerful. That's what the Black Power Blueprint is doing. Um, and I want to salute all of our new donors that we have. Um, so Kitty, as the project's coordinator, you will be involved in the basketball court project under the leadership of the Black Power Blueprint. Can you tell us a little bit about what goes into installing a basketball court and what will be funded from the contributions that we raised tonight? Oh, hello, Allie. Thank you for that question. And just to say, you know, all the don donors from today, from tonight, from last month, from last week, you know, so much has occurred. You know, the Ahura House, 30 years vacant, was completely re renovated, basement up to the third floor. The Aquaba Hall was established, a real thriving community center. Buildings were demolished in order to build the outdoor venue. These were buildings that had a, a history 30 years ago in that community, but they were left with no economy and they were just left to rot and they couldn't be rehab. That has been transformed to this beautiful outdoor venue space that will host the farmer's market come June 5th, which is profound to solve the problem of food access in that community and ending the food apartheid of North St. Louis. Um, so the vegetable garden, um, properties were bought from the LRA and then demolished, you know, that have a future vision you know, from the Black Power Blueprint Steering Committee, you know, to be um, build economic commerce and build storefronts, you know, perhaps out of containers, which is very, you know, very cool project that's being looked at at this time, you know, and the beautiful um, fourplex building that was acquired that has been renovated for the future African Independence Workforce Program. And right next door to that is the lot that was acquired from the LRA for the basketball court. And I mean, we, the project wasn't slated to take that building down, but it started breaking apart. It already, already the whole garage had fallen down right through into the basement, the garage, big attached garage, and you couldn't enter it, but there were times when we wanted to go in it to look at it. And you, you couldn't look at it, but you looked at evidence of people opening up an area to be able to go inside to sleep during the winter. I mean, the conditions are outrageous, you know, they're intolerable you know, to know that they happen in our name. You know, we, we, we can't have this in our name anymore. And that's why I love this webinar and people contributing to this project because every donor makes a difference. And, um, you know, in terms of the incredible vision for the Black, uh, the black Community Controlled Basketball Court, you know, through, through our donors, we've already raised $14,000 that purchased the site from the Land Reutilization Authority, the LRA, that to Charles Masimba, Masimba and um, uh, President Columbia Bentham, you know, ran against, you know, calling for it to be called the Land Reparations Authority. So the LRA owned this as, as men, and many uh, in the tens of thousands of abandoned buildings that they hold until they're ready to give it to developers, you know, for gentrification. But APDF was able to get that building 
and it started falling apart. So we, you know, had to jump on it and demolish it sooner than later. And that, of course, is economic development for the African family, Jath Construction, that does it. And then there's all spin-off businesses. And this is part of bringing economic development in the community. People who do hand brick peeling apart certain areas that they don't want to crash over onto anything else, another property. The people who actually stack the bricks 500 to a pallet. And sometimes this is in the boiling hot summer. And, you know, it's like down to the basement level, pulling up all the bricks that, you know, once the walls come down, because that's another economy. To, they, they make a living. We, we spoke with a man one day, 40 years doing this. I mean, this is labor. We is, we've never experienced. This is the kind of labor that the colonized do. It, it reminds me somewhat in the minds of Africa. And people take great pride in their work. They're experts at their work. But this is back-breaking, brutal labor that goes on, you know, in St. Louis and everywhere African people live. So, you know, in the process of dealing with people like sports courts who built a, um, they built a community basketball court in West Oakland. They also built one in San Francisco. And they are in St. Louis as well as Northern California. And so, you know, it's like, there has to be complete grading of the lot. You know, it looks kind of flat to the eye, but it's not. You know, you have to completely grade the lot. They may have to take away the one tree we wanted to be able to stay for shade, but we'll see in terms of space. You know, they might have to take that tree down. They have to lay the foundation for the court. Then there's installing the whole court top pad. And then you have to apply all the design marks for a basketball game. You know, you, you install the basketball hoops. You got to have like 18 foot high fencing so the ball doesn't always go in the street and kids run out to get the ball. You know, you might want benches or different bleaches, a water fountain. And also we want to put a plaque up, you know, acknowledging all the donors and then have a big grand opening. And then begin a powerful basketball program that APEDF has already had experience doing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But we need the so, donations, yes. So exciting, thank you so much, Kitty. Um, I wanted to just uh, interject with the question that came from YouTube, which is really awesome. Uh, King on YouTube says, Uhuru, my wife wants to donate through her employee's community affairs department, which will match her donation, but she needs the exact name of the organization it will go to, please advise. It's A-P-E-D-F Inc. And we can definitely have someone from the administration of APEGF get in touch with King and his wife if he lets us know how we can do that. Awesome. And would it be uh, info at APEDF.org? Would that be a good email address to yes. contact? Okay. Yes. All right. I'm putting that in the chat as well. Thank you, King. Thank you uh, for that. And thank you, Kitty. And also thank you to the people who have continued to donate. KC put in $10, Uhuru, Allison, uh, who plays a really important role in the Black Power Blueprint, um, put in $26. Uh, I just heard from Ann Leslie that she has officially put in her $1,000 matching fund contribution. Uhuru, Uhuru to Comrade Ann, yeah. thank you so much. That is so powerful. And, uh, and Marissa put in $52. So. Uh, Mr. Martinez, thank you so much. So we're now at $5,282 raised from Give St. Louis Day. So let's keep it going. GiveSTLDay.org slash Black Power Blueprint. And I just really appreciate this whole discussion and, and just what the chairman has, Chairman Amali Shatella has been saying that this is colonialism. This is the two realities that uh, exist in this country and that the African community has been stripped of any political and economic power. And that is why it is a struggle for power. And for white people to support that is not charity. It is a stand of solidarity and reparations. And I'd like to ask you, Kitty, to, to expound upon that because uh, you've lived in St. Louis now for a few years working under the leadership of the party. You've seen uh, the disparities in the conditions of life faced by uh, our community, the white community, uh, and the African community on the north side. Uh, could you talk about that and how how the work that that the party is doing and the Black Power Blueprint is doing and, and the solidarity movement under it uh, are doing to address that? Well, Huru, 
Thank you, Jesse. Um, well, one, one thing I've observed is that we can live totally, you know, on the south side of St. Louis and never really have to look at the reality of the divide head on. You know, we can drive up Kings Highway Boulevard past towering economic centers and newly constructed condos and, and every amenity. We pass museums, the beautiful botanical gardens, incredible forest park that's only second to Central Park in its size and amenities. You know, we have health food stores, famous steakhouses, cafes, you know, all the vegan restaurants. And as you're driving up, you just literally, you're at a light and it's Del Mar Boulevard. And you drive a few feet and you see churches, chicken, White Castle, KFC, the dollar store, and miles and miles of dilapidated housing and empty lots because of the economic embargo and the extraction of capital from the black community. That's the long and the short of it. They had a plan that started 50 years ago. It was actually mentioned in the 40s, started 50 years ago seriously, a plan where they picked three communities they felt had the best survival rate. And they took all the, everything Chachara has been naming and summing up the federal taxes, the promise zone money, you know, everybody's taxes, their property taxes, and they poured it into our communities on the South side. Never talked about, this is how it is, you know? And yeah, I know the African People's Solidarity Committee has a slogan, whoops, you know, has a slogan, um, you know, from Chiron Amalia Shatella, solidarity, you know, not charity. And that, that's really profound because, you know, we, we often do want to do something about it. We, we don't want, we don't like what we see. We want to do something about it. But the real thing is, you know, to do something that's going to solve the problems and make change. Charity does not work. It does not change the relationships. It's a temporary feel good for us to give charity. The conditions and power relationships stay the same. It does not really, and it doesn't really ultimately give us what we want. When we do feel outraged by the conditions we see, and we want to say no more in our name. It's only reparations that does that. Because when we give reparations, we acknowledge we're righting the historic wrong. And that the resources we give really belong to the, those of whom it has been stolen in the first place. So reparations contributes to changing the relationship that we have with the African community to a principled one, as opposed to the relationships we were born into with this parasitic social system that benefits us at the expense of African people. So the Black Power Blueprint is so mobilizing and powerful that it has won so many commute people from the South Side to participate, like as donors, let's get the shed for the garden, as gardeners, because in our communities, we've often had gardens for 20 and 30 years in our backyards, We're like expert gardeners. You know, they come and bring their skills to help with uh, the projects outside. Um, they, they win friends, we have friends, we have people that are coming to us that, that saw an article in the newspaper, the beautiful article in the St. Louis Dispatch that came out when Tachar was running for office and Columbia was running for office that really won people and they started donating, then they won their groups and their friends. So that even, if, um, you know, just well-known personalities are winning donations for the Black Power Blueprint. Um, I was walking in the park early in the morning and ran into a donor and she was with a friend and she said, I was just talking about the garden and the friend said, oh, I have these seeds and these plants. I wanna to donate to the garden. I wanna come and see the garden. Um, you know, this meditation group chose APEDF for the work it's doing with the Black Power Blueprint to make it that monthly donation that each person voluntarily gives, which was really profound. So we see that relationships are changing. The Black Power Blueprint is giving us the opportunity to change our relationship. And it's a very powerful thing that's happening in St. Louis. Wow. Uhuru, thank you, Kitty. Allie. Uhuru, yeah, I I just really appreciate that, Kitty, and you, you putting that forward and like seeing the community 
uh, or saying white people step up. This is how we can contribute. And we see, you know, what's happening in the world today. We wonder, like, what can we, what can we do? How can we actually change the conditions, you know? And and um, this is reparations is repairing the damage. It's taking this stand of reparations um, and putting it towards these projects, like the Black Power Blueprint, that are really transforming lives, as as Deputy Chair said. Um, and yeah, I just. I just appreciate you you putting that forward because even for the white community, this you know this isn't a putting this money forward. This isn't some sort of punishment as reparations. We see this as as a future, you know, a way that we can, can contribute to the future. It's so uplifting and inspiring, um, you know, to be able to participate in these projects, to be able to con you know return the resources um, to two projects that are actually making a difference. So, um, you know, it's, it's no wonder that there's been so much support uh, from the white community as well for these, for these projects. And I really appreciate uh, you putting that forward, um, Kitty Uhuru. I wanna appreciate it as well. This has been an incredible program. We're getting ready to wrap up, um, but before we do, and before we show, we wanna show the video again, because thank you everybody. I mean, the support, the groundswell has been so profound. Uh, we raised over $5,282 for the community basketball court of the Black Power Blueprint tonight. This is reparations. This is African self-determination. This is solidarity, not charity. And this is changing the world. So this is so exciting. And before we show that video again, uh, I wanted to see if uh, T'Charwa, um, if you're still with us, if there's any any uh, last remarks that you would like to make um, before we wrap up this program tonight. And thank you again for being on with us. Uhuru. Uhuru. Yeah, I just uh, want to really unite with uh, those who have united with this project. You know, and uh, in this case, in the form of donating, making contributions to make this happen. Uh, as Kitty said, this is a real anti gentrification economic development project. And uh, that is what distinguishes it from any other project is that uh, it is designed for the black community to have power over our own lives, control over our own economy. Um, and it is a real you know, uh, black working class uh, project designed uh, to win economic development, win political power for the majority of our community, not a sector of our community. And so um, through the Black Power Blueprint, through this basketball court, uh, the community of North St. Louis is being uh, connected to a whole worldwide movement and are, um, you know, winning more and more, you know, space, more and more territory to be able uh, to fight to have, uh, to build an economy so that we can have a life, you know, for ourselves and our children, that we don't have to live in, uh, you know, these depleted um, deserts um, and subject to you know, police containment, but the people can have real opportunity, you know, these beautiful businesses uh, that we are, you know, developing the uh, basketball court, the outdoor market, you know, for black farmers market, um, the beautiful Quaba rental hall, um, you know, the women's center, all of these incredible projects right now are happening uh, right here in North St. Louis. Community uh, basketball court is one aspect of that, you know, uh, taking up space in a whole, you know, I don't know uh, how many block radius, you know, just transforming the conditions of people in North St. Louis, and uh, it is really, really, really serving as a model for people throughout the world. So I just want to thank everybody who contributed and for um, our hosts and, uh, you know, uh, Chairman Omani Chitella, Deputy Chair Owners of Nation Chitella, Kitty Riley, and everybody who uh, makes this possible. Uh -huh. Thank you so much uh, to Charo Masimba, the African People's Socialist Party, Thank you, Kitty Riley, uh, so much for being on with us tonight. And um, Ali, I'm going to give you the honors of the, the closing uh, <laughs> chant. But before we do, uh, we want to show this video one last time because it's so powerful. This is what everyone has supported tonight. And if you haven't, 
you can still go to givestlday.org slash Black Power Blueprint. We can continue uh, collecting contributions until midnight tonight on that website. And then after that, you can just go straight to uh, blackpowerblueprint.org and, uh, and contribute. So um, here we go. Let's check this video out one more time, and then we'll come back and, and close out the program tonight. right here in St. Louis. The conditions of the North Side is horrific. I just think that it's important to say that we believe in the democratic anti-colonial right to be able to have community control of every aspect of our lives and our communities. And I think the most fundamental, most democratic, most anti-colonial demand that I can conceive of is community control of basketball court. The basketball court is so important. Uh, number one, because the community has no recreation. Uh, so along with uh, this uh, lack of grocery stores and economic activity, there is no kind of cultural uh, activity and programs for children to participate in. We need a basketball court. We need to have things in our community. Black people need to be empowered of their own life. We want black community control of a basketball court, a simple democratic anti-colonial demand. Who will step up and make the slam dunk? That's the question, question of the hour. So, Brew Alley. Hour. Well, I just really want to appreciate and salute this incredible webinar. And everyone who is on this webinar, I want to salute to Charwa uh, for being here with us today. I want to salute Kitty, Uhuru Kitty. And also my co-host here today, Chair of the Uhuru Solidarity with Jesse Neville. And I'm going to close out with Unity Through Reparations. Reparations.